Hi, I'm Tim Demers. Uh, I'm a fifth year PhD student at the uh, University of Washington. I work on efficient um, um, large language models and making them more accessible uh, to everyday users. And here I present um, KBIT inference scaling laws. And so this work is about um, sort of a trade-off between uh, how many bits you use per parameter and how many parameters you use for a model. So for example, if you have a model that's 10 billion parameters, you quantize it to eight bits to make it easier usable, uh, or you have a 20 billion parameter model and you quantize it to four bits, then the question is, which of these models is better? They have the equal amount of bits, and uh, inference for a batch size one takes about equal amount of time, but one of these must be better, and uh, we try to find out what this is. So what this work basically answers is, um, how can you maximize information per bit in a model if you have a fixed memory footprint? And so we ran uh, 35,000 zero-shot experiments on a pre-trained language model where we quantize the weights between three and eight bits, and uh, the inputs stay at 16-bit precision. And uh, we uh, look at uh, models from 19 million parameters to 176 billion parameters. Um, and uh, we try different kind of data types, different kinds of uh, quantization procedures. And then we plot everything and see, can we find some scaling behavior? And so these are the main results. And so what we see here is that uh, on the axis of the total amount of bits uh, in the model, on the y-axis, zero-shot accuracy over four tasks. And then in colors, we have the different bit precision. And so if we go from 16 to 8 to 4-bit precision, then the overall information density, how much information we have, or zero-shot accuracy per bit increases. So um, that means you want to have more parameters in 4-bit precision rather than less parameters in 8-bit precision, for example. But we also see if we go to 3-bit precision, uh, performance drops, and we have these jagged lines, which are instabilities, where the quantization more or less fails. Uh, this point is near random performance, so it does very poorly. And so after seeing this plot, the first thought was, hmm, maybe we can Im improve 3-bit performance so we can improve uh, further over the 4-bit results. And so that's what we tried. We developed a method um, proxy quantization where we uh, find outliers uh, that um, are basically in the hidden state and associated with certain uh, values in the weight matrix, certain dimensions in the weight matrix. And what we do is we take 99% in k-bit precision and then 1% in 16-bit precision, the outliers, and we quantize our model in that way. And so uh, we average the overall uh, memory footprint and uh, get the total amount, amount of bits in the model. And so what we see here is, again, the jagged line, three bits, and now the improved line with the outliers. And so we see the model does much better, and it's very stable, so the no more jagged lines. But we also see that the average sort of information per bit is still worse than four-bit quantization. And that means four-bit is best. And you cannot do better than four-bit precision if you just look at the weights. If you look at the weights in the inputs, you can do a little bit better, but if you have the setup where you just look at the weights without any further information, very difficult to do better than four bits. So is the, is the basic idea that like, you take the, the weights that have like high variance and lead to bad results and bad accuracy, and you like obf obfuscate them by putting them together or something, and so this way you have lower, um, like higher accuracy? So it's, it's not so much about variance, it seems that um, there are certain very static dimensions that always have very large values. And um, th these values are always associated, or seem to be always associated with large weights in the, um, uh, in the weight matrix, some large dimensions. And you have to expose for the input sort of uh, dimensions and the output dimensions. So you have dimensions that consume outliers and then dimensions that produce outliers. And um, so it's actually sort of very systematic and not so much variance around that. Um, but yeah, so that's how we can improve performance, but it's not as quite as good as 4-bit. But a sort of one question remains is, can we do better with 4-bit if you use sort of other methods to improve the overall bit scaling trend? And so we find two different things. One is data types. And so uh, if we have an integer data type, for example, the average uh, performance per bit is lower. And if we have a floating point data type, then the average uh, performance is higher. So um, we find that data types can make a difference and it improves sort of the bit level scaling. The problem is um, it's very difficult to find improvements and these look rather tiny, but they are significant and they are important. 
Uh, similarly, we find an improvement if you use a smaller block size. And so a uh, smaller block size means we take an input tensor, um, slice it into small segments, we quantize each of them independently. And so the smaller our segments are, the higher uh, we get sort of the bit precision um, overall. Um, smaller block sizes are often good to isolate outliers into some, some blocks. And that seems to be the, what gives us the performance improvement. And so to summarize, uh, we, we have shown through a lot of experiments that if you want to uh, get the highest information density per sort of uh, memory footprint, um, then the best you can do if you look at the wave matrices is through 4-bit quantization with the small block size and use a floating point data type there. And then you get the best model for a certain many footprint. So I'm just going to like repeat the question as before, but like why, why isn't every top lab using 4 bits? So, um, um, if you do have inference, you have two major use cases. One use case is more for consumers, where you want to load a large language models and just generate some samples. And that's sort of personal use. And there the bottleneck is loading the bits from the weight matrix. That makes the GPU slow. That makes inference slow. If you are sort of a company and you want to serve a model for millions of users, then, then the problem is you have a more balanced problem where the bottleneck is both loading the bits from the weight matrix, but also utilizing the GPU in terms of flops. And so you use a much larger bit size. And in that case, um, the loading the bits from the weight matrix is not a huge bottleneck. And so they're not huge advantages by using uh, four bit precision. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah, thanks.